Hey, what's going on, everybody? Sam Heine here, back with another episode of Street Talk. Uh, we're in Paris Town today, sitting here with Shannon Musselman, um, longtime resident of Paris Town. Um, 26 years, right? That's right. We're, we're 1994. In 1994, yeah. And we, uh, you have completely transformed this house. You moved in 94, and that was before all the Paris Town developments and word of uh, improvements started happening. I mean, it was, it was right. totally different Right, it was the time. beginning of, of some improvements. There's been a few phases for our neighborhood. Yeah, you've seen the broad spectrum. Right, of, of, I was phase of one of, of three in 94. Yeah, um, well, there's a lot going on now and there's a lot coming up and uh, you're on the board of the Paris Town Point Neighborhood Association. I sure am. And uh, so you have some insider information. Hopefully we can, we can probe some out of her today, folks. But uh, what initially brought you to Paris Town Point? What compelled you to come back in 94? Well, it was a decision between renting an apartment and buying a house. And I was very blessed because my father was willing to step up to the plate and help me to be able to buy this house. And so um, the city came in to the neighborhood and they bought old shotgun properties right here on Lambton Street. You can see it because I live next to a house that dates back to 1900. And they uh, bought and worked with Covenant Housing to make for a first time home buyers program. And they sold the lots for a dollar to the builders. And I bought this house for $55,000, I think, $56,000 in 1994. Yeah. And qualified for the program. And here we are today, 26 years later, just yeah. like it's yesterday. What a renaissance, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say that I'm part of that, but yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's it? What, what's, so when was the last time you lived here? Because now it's a rental property. Yes, it's rental. And um, I lived here in 2000, I want to say 2009. Okay. I moved okay. out. Yeah, that's yeah. a good chunk of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of tra- a lot of change since 2009. As a matter of fact. Yeah, and the investment grows over time as well. I mean, everything it seems like, and because you're right next to everything that's going on in, in Paris Town and Steve Smith, you know, he tackled, uh, you know, the old tannery building and Paris Town Hall, and it's just such a cool feel down there, and it's just really the tip of the iceberg, and so to be able to walk out on your front porch and look over and you know just imagine that the whole thing is going to be turning over in the next five to ten i don't think anybody really knows at this point maybe right well we we're anxiously awaiting the rfp on the uh, urban government center property but when that developer is allocated it'll it'll happen quickly it'll be amazing and it'll be a great transformation that is desperately needed for this area from from being a longtime resident and kind of seeing the the transitions over the years, what would you like to see happen over there? Well, we need to get back to what I experienced back in 1994, um, and that was movement in the neighborhood and nothing vacated and no vandalism. And you know, we've got we've just got a dilapidated property that is truly. And I saw right now, it has mm-hmm. gigantic potential. And I mean, let's talk about it. It's a 10 acre campus in the heart of the Highlands. And it's conveniently located to everything. Many thoroughfares come into this area of town to get downtown. Mm-hmm. So we just need to get it from not to not be stagnant. We needed yeah. to get built, building the economy back up, coming off of COVID. I mean, we just got to drive money back into the area. And I honestly, admire Gil Holland for what he did in Nulu. I hope Paris Town is the new, you yeah. know, revitalization for our city and drives a ton of people into this area because it's a fabulous, yeah. you know, it's right off the edge of the Highlands, right off the edge of Germantown. Mm-hmm. It's a fantastic area. As you know, you've done all your research on yeah. the real estate end of it. You know what's happening here. I feel like it might be too. I feel like, you know, the Highlands is right over there. Germantown, Smoketown, Shelby Park. There's all this. And the Highland, uh, like the, the Highlands, is experiencing a little bit of a a comeback as well. There's certain parts of it that maybe were sagging more than uh, in the heyday back right. a number of years ago. But there's all a lot of positive progression clustering around Paris Town, and it almost seems like it reminds me of like a a college campus quad. You know, it's like a, almost like a park-like setting, and and you know it's underutilized right now but it seems to me like with all the uh, you know it could be just a gathering place at some point absolutely and, and i hope it work. is i mean one of the things that that's been discussed in pat with the past RSP, rfp and the past developer 
Um, you know, the real call that we repeatedly hear through the neighborhood and its residents is community. Mm -hmm. Community is at the heart of what their wants are and, and green space. Those are two really important elements repeatedly that we need to hit home with the developer in Louisville forward. And that, that property has such great potential for the movement and for the green space and, you know, for, for a good flow, especially if somehow it's connected to the lower campus of what Steve Smith and his development group is doing at the mm -hmm. lower part of the hill. If that gets connected and you've got, I mean, you've got a major, huge thoroughfare there that can be a circulation of exercise, you know, it, it'll promote great things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it seems like, uh, I, I don't know, it just seems like people these days and everything that's going on in Germantown and even Smoketown, it's just, it's like this urban living type of feel and you can get around to other neighborhoods that are surrounding it. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of attractions and experiences, things to eat, places to work. So I feel like it taps into that urban living type of setting you need where, that. where you can live here, you can work here, you can, you know, go see a show at Paris Town Hall. Right. Yeah. I feel like I, I feel like I harp on that, you know, through a lot of episodes of my street talk, but it's so true. I, I think like that's the new trend is people want like a multifaceted style of living instead of like, you know, driving 30 minutes out to the burbs to, right. to, to go home and then 30 minutes back in to do anything. No, it can all be just right at your... And they can catch it on their way, you know, they can stop on their way from downtown out to the burbs easily. Right. Just something that's easy in, easy out, um, that offers a variety of entertainment, you know, and that's what he, that the Old Twister Paris Town Hall is fantastic. I mean, what yeah. they've done down there in the Kentucky Center for the Arts and that movement with that outdoor, they're offering our neighbors throughout, let's see, when that launched in the fall, they had an opening and they invited the neighborhood, which was so gracious of them, to come and experience a concert. And um, it was a great night. It was in the fall of the year. Then we transitioned into the winter and they had an ice skating rink down at Christie's Garden. And what a gift yeah. that Christie gave us in the garden. That whole Christmas concept was, you know, so positive that it's going to grow into even bigger this upcoming Christmas. They've got some great plans in store. Um, Start to a really cool tradition. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and it's family oriented and that's important. You know, the Highlands, I grew up in the Highlands and it's that urbanism and neighborhood is so key and creating that and joining with this neighborhood but yet being separate and being able to offer to the community a great place to come, throw a blanket down. You can watch the concerts that are going on inside because they've graciously given us that big screen and all of the speakers yeah. outside, and that's free. I know, isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's great. And it's cool too because, I mean, there's a lot of things that are, um, you know, right on the horizon with the government center and, um, you know, the Baptist Health Building, and there's a lot of, things that have not been hashed out yet over there right but it's nice to see that they have the anchors going paris town hall is having successful shows and uh the ice skating rink too i mean that right. was that was rocking did you go to drag on ice they did I, drag on ice i didn't go did you no. hear about it i heard about it though <laughs> yeah. but like i mean it's crazy like things like i don't know it's it's cool that they're already getting a start instead of like needing it to all be built out for people to come down and enjoy it they can oh, yeah. like, come down and get a taste of it and like kind of get a feel it's of, only going to get better with that yeah. and you know what happens on the upper campus needs to be easily accessible to that and um i don't know i just think that it's a big big positive yeah to our neighborhood yeah well you're sitting pretty it seems like you know anybody that's living around paris town is sort of benefiting from um property valuation spikes at the very least if you you know if you want to boil it down to that but you know i think there's also like i've walked certain people through um, houses like not on Lambton but uh, East Breckenridge just right on the uh, outskirts there in Germantown and uh, you know they, they always wonder about like they look across at these future construction sites really I mean the buildings whether they come down or whether they're going to revamp them um, they're like well do I want to live right across from that um, right now or do I want to go somewhere else that's a little more quiet but if you can like see past that, you know, in five to 10 years, like how nice that would be, like having that as a resource. I mean, what a cool. Absolutely. Yeah. A little and bit they, they are, they are 
very conscientious. They've heard the neighbors in this neighborhood and they have worked tirelessly to make sure that they accommodate the curfews on noise and the ordinances the city has in place. And fortunately for the entertainment district of what's developed down there, which we wanna keep that. We mm -hmm. wanna keep that down there because it does affect some neighbors, but they are hearing those neighbors and they're working very closely. The maintenance crews come through after an event, they put pylons to block streets. So yeah. they utilize the parking that's provided and um, they do a nice cleanup. So they're very conscientious and they are working very closely to keep that at bay yeah. and, and let this be what it is. And it's an, a neighborhood, an established neighborhood with um, you know children in it and they're mm -hmm. conscientious. And I think that so far so good. And we certainly have all the contacts and know who to reach if we have a problem. Yeah. So that doesn't get out of hand or co right. become unmanageable. So no one should be hesitant in looking at property or being worried about, do I want to live across the street from that? Because I feel like only positive things are going to come in yeah. the future development, no matter who the developer is. I think that they are going to definitely, we are a very small neighborhood association, but we have passion in our neighbors yeah. and they like their voices heard. So they show up at those meetings yeah. and they let it be known. And Jeff O'Brien and his group at Louisville Forward, they listen and they're going to put together this you know, we got a second opportunity because, you know, one RFP came out and that didn't follow through. And now we're at the second RFP and the voices have been heard and the zoning didn't get passed on the property. So the developer will have to go and go through all of those channels and mm -hmm. the neighborhood will be involved. So yeah. that'll make for a pleasant future place for people to consider in buying in this area because it's very desirable. Yeah, Houses go on the market and they're gone. They are. There's the one right down the street, right? I mean, we were just talking about it. Yeah. They, and especially with COVID-19 and a rampant seller's market. I mean, <laughs> in, a, in a neighborhood like this with so many cool things coming, they're selling like hotcakes, which leads me to uh, my last question. For somebody that is looking to buy a new home and they're looking at one in, in Paris Town Point, they might be looking at one in the Highlands, you know, they're looking at a few different neighborhoods um, around town. From your experience, uh, since you moved here in 94, you know, what are, what are some pros that you would just kind of point out from your experience um, to make a case for coming to Paris Town, you know, outside of the stuff, I guess, that we talked about? I mean, there's a lot, a lot of cool things there's coming. A lot of, yeah, action definitely going on. Um, I would say, accessibility was a gigantic thing that I learned. I, you know, I knew I wanted to be in the Highlands. So I was looking for apartments on Cherokee Road when I was looking for apartments, when finally my dad and I talked and my sister who was in real estate at the time um, found this opportunity. And accessibility is important because I was I grew up in the Highlands and I wanted to be able to access all those same things and mm -hmm. get to places quick. And this property and this area, Paris Town, surrounding, you know, it's just conveniently located. I could go, come home, I could get change clothes, get out my door, I could be running down Cherokee Road in five minutes then, probably more like 20 minutes now, yeah. um, just to get there. Um, but I could run down Cherokee Road and look at all the gorgeous architecture that surrounds this mm -hmm. community. and. Um, you know, be back here, jump in the shower, change clothes, and then go up to Bargetown Road and meet my friends at Jack Fry's for dinner or, you know, run and catch a show at one of the local pubs, you yeah. know, and then closing the night out. You know, we would we would come back here to have a last beer and shoot a game of pool right across the street at the time. It's known as Brook and Billy's now. Yeah. But at the time it was called the Coach Lamp. And, you know, it was the coldest beer in town and we were we had huh. closed down Bargetown Road and it was time for one last game of pool and yeah. a beer and that's where we'd go. That's a cool building too. I was admiring that on the way in. Yeah, he's done a great job and he's been longevity just like Syl Meyer who owned um, the Coach Lamp. Mm. So he bought it from Syl Meyer who was my neighbor next door in this house that was, oh. yeah. And my dad and Syl Meyer were friends. Nice. Uh, so that was kind of a neat story when I bought the house. Syl was still living there and had the coach lamp. And then he sold it to Billy, who's got Brook and Billy's. And they used to have a hot plant lunch, just like all the little places on the corner in, in yeah. Germantown. And they were very, it was a very popular. I ate many lunches off that hot steam bar. Huh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, interesting. A new, a new wave of... Uh food and and drink over there now i haven't been to brook and billy's but i've heard i've heard some some good things it's, yeah it's great yeah it, it's a it's a great local place you know that's another thing about paris town now that you, you we started on the restaurant and you know you had the cafe 
the cafe bought in 2007. I actually reached out to Sil and Cindy to Sal and Cindy today to find out. They bought in 2007. 2008 is when we hit the you know the the market do dove yeah. and real estate took a crunch and then we started as a neighborhood feeling we had this successful phase one two which is Gullion Court and then phase three across the street mm -hmm. on Gullion Court it was hugely successful in development and we hit 2008 and Sill came into the neighborhood and they were at the antique mall. People came here to see them. They mm -hmm. came here for their food. So he kept us alive. Yeah. You know, Steve has admittedly said that that the the Louisville Stoneware it was suffering, but it was businesses like Brook and Billy's and the cafe yeah. that and the Louisville Stoneware that kept us alive. I mean, that yeah. maybe would were hanging on by a string, but they helped us survive. And now we're ready for our resurgence with what's going on across the street. Right. Yeah, and I absolutely strong business core. I've never seen a lunch rush as busy as the cafe, by the way. <laughs> right? It's so consistent every single time I go in there, but it, what, what a great place. Um, well, cool. I mean, there's a lot of, lot of really cool stuff going on in Town. It's the center of the city, too, to, speaking of the Location. accessibility piece. Yeah, yeah. it's just, it, if you look at a map, I mean, it really is kind of like right in the center of Louisville. You can get anywhere in town from, quick. you know, pretty quick. So, um, pretty cool. I'm excited to see what's coming next. and. Uh, We'll have to do this again. We will have to do this again. We got to. We, we need to get more updates from Shannon. We got to utilize your I knowledge. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. That'd be great. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate yeah. you doing this with me. It's yeah. a great promotion for a great area. Absolutely. And yeah. one that I'm very passionate about. I'm excited to do it. I'm excited to learn more about it. So yeah, we'll definitely have to have another conversation down the road. So, I hope so. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. All right, guys. We'll uh, see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>